This geological map comes from East Yorkshire. It was published in 1909 and it's hand coloured and shows the geology as recorded from surveys done in the 19th century. It's still a really great basis from which we can understand map patterns and how they relate to the um, bedrock geology and landscape. The base map is so old that it doesn't actually use topographic contours. They're just a few spot heights um, and the main valley features are shown by this general shading. And the units are imperial, so miles and feet. Let's first think about how the material is laid out on this publication. We have the geological map uh, forming the centerpiece with a scale. And we've also got along the side here a key to the geological units that colour match the rocks on the map. And they're shown in stratigraphic order from oldest to youngest. These are all sedimentary rocks. So they show the stratigraphic order and give some idea of the relative thickness of the units on the sketch there. In addition, there are younger rocks here or younger sediments that are modern material, including material currently being deposited in valleys at the top there. Material we generally group together and call drift. Today we're going to be interested in just the bedrock geology, which are rocks that range in age from Triassic through to Cretaceous. If we look at the base of the map here, we can see that it has a geological cross section. It's not totally helpful because it's arbitrarily been chopped off at sea level and it's quite difficult to appreciate, though it's shown, that these rocks here project beneath the green rocks. The green rocks are chalk, more of those as we go through. But the cross section's there to show how the rocks project to depth. There's a three to one vertical exaggeration, so the landscape is brought out and the dips are increased over what they actually are on the ground. We're also going to be using vertically exaggerated cross sections just to bring out some of the key features as we go. So let's develop a strategy for taking a map like this apart. We're going to concentrate really on the left hand or the western side of the map. So let's zoom in on that. OK, well, let's generate a sketch map for this western area. A sketch map is a really useful thing because it gets us to link them out how units relate to one another. And we're going to simplify it, so I'm not going to worry at this stage about all this irregularity on the boundary between the green rocks and the brown and yellow rocks down in here. Let's just make a frame for our sketch map, like this. And I can see that the green rocks lie on the eastern side and the northern strip, so they're going to come down something like that. So these are our green units, which I'll just simply colour in like this for now, just so we know what we're looking at. And this is, if I look at the key, is the chalk. So let's look at some of the other units. And I can see in the southern part of the map here, there's some yellow and pinky tan colours coming through here that lie directly adjacent to the green rocks. But as we follow them along, they don't exist in the north. So there's a strip in here that must pinch out something like that, which are these, I'll just colour them all in yellow, this package in here. And then I can see that the corner of the map down in here towards the west is this lighter brown going to the darker brown like this. So let's just capture that and say that there's a package that sits something like that with a light brown. I've only got one brown colour, so I'll just colour this very rather lightly brown through here, and a darker brown in that position through here. So I've just divided the map up into what amounts to four units, really, the chalk sitting over on the east, and then these three other units over on the left-hand side, the western side of the map. And just so I know what I'm talking about, there's our north arrow through there. So a really simple sketch map. Haven't put a scale on it, we'll deal with that later. OK, now let's think about how these units relate to one another. We will do this on a cross section and we'll start off putting a cross section through this northern part of the map here, which will be through this part. And we'll just draw in a line which shows us more or less our datum in here. And now we need to just quickly sketch on some topography. For that, we're going to need to look in in a bit more detail. So 
I can see, I'm scanning around, there are topographic contours on these ancient maps, but what there are are a few spot heights, and I can see that the elevation here is 500 and something feet. Um, divide by three if you want to get that approximately in meters. Either way, this ground is relatively high compared to the ground down here. I can see a spot height there of 38 feet. I can also see that um, the ground up in here has got various other features such as tumuli and various other sort of archaeological things which tend to be on hilltops. So this area here is high ground and this area is low. So let's just draw in some topography, starting low down here and then climbing up the escarpment onto the plateau, something like this. And let's label the orientation, so that's east, well east, northeast, and west, south, west over this side. So now we've got our oriented profile. Right, so now let's put some geology on top, shall we? So the high ground through here is all chalk. So we can see it's that green colour. So let's put it onto the plateau, colouring in green, just like this. So now let's turn our attention to this low ground down here where we've got light brown and some dark brown as well. So let's put this onto our profile. Put the light brown that's over on the western side and then some dark brown that lies between it and the chalk on the escarpment, something like that. So let's draw in some boundaries here. We can see that the lower rocks here go underneath, the light brown goes underneath the dark brown, so the boundaries incline down like this and up into the air originally. So we have light brown underneath. And colouring the chalk on top, let's just uh, colour in the dark brown. It sits in the middle of our sandwich. Something like that. And then the light brown sitting underneath. So we've got our units coming around like this. We've got them dipping to the east. The older rocks are down here on the western side, youngest over here on the right hand side. So we have older sitting underneath younger, dipping towards the east. Well, let's now turn our attention to the map pattern for the base of the chalk that forms its western outcrop and we can see that it's quite irregular on the map even though the geological structure is simple but if we look in detail at the map we can see that these invasions of brown coincide with valleys with the streams running along their base so the brown is in valley bottoms maybe then this complexity in here relates to the interaction of geology with topography. Well, let's consider this by sketching another one of our little cross sections. Here we go, let's put a profile in, up the escarpment onto the top, and we can incline the boundary at the base of the chalk down like this. So we've got chalk on the top of the escarpment, and the older brown rocks we could put in underneath. Okay, so now let's put in a valley and just rub out some of the geology on top that we've got there and just tighten up the landscape like this, creating a valley, tidy up the base of the chalk like that. So there's our landscape and chalk boundary, colouring the chalk, quick tidy up, something like that, put in the uh, lower brown years underneath and we've got our modified profile. So we can imagine going on a little journey coming along the plateau like this, dropping into the valley and encountering brown rocks at the bottom like this, and then climbing up the other hillside, back onto chalk, down onto the brown units out at the front. And if we look at the map, that's what we see. Out along the chalk, into the valley with the brown, and then up the other side into the chalk, and then out onto the world of brown out to the west. So all this complexity that we see on the map with these features of invasion of brown into the green up in here, well, they're valleys incised into our green plateau. So the map pattern in here is complicated because of the incision in the landscape. So we can see in these two sections that the bedrock geology is simple, but the incision has created a complicated outcrop pattern. Well, so far, we've just been considering this northern area. 
But as we follow the boundary of the base of the chalk south, we've got this yellow unit, and we see it on the main map as well. So how do we explain this relationship here? Well, let's just sketch another profile. So let's put a datum in. Here we go. So we're going to draw it off in the same direction. And let's just check and see whether the terrain is as we remember it, with high ground to low ground. Zoom in and have a look at that ground in there. And yes, so the chalk is still a plateau with some relatively high ground. And the low ground down in here, yes, is still low. Those farmyards and so forth, you can see. No spotites, but it's still pretty low down there. OK, so we have a low ground to high ground situation. Let's just sketch it on. Here comes the low ground, up the escarpment edge, and then up onto the plateau top again, as we've seen before. So there's our topographic profile. Now let's put the units on. So we're going to put the dipping uh, base of the chalk coming down, dipping down towards the east like that. So there's the chalk. Let's just colour some in, just so we don't forget what we've got. So green rocks sitting on top. Now let's think about the lower units. So we've got the brown units down in here, all dipping towards the east like that, beneath the chalk. Let's just pop that on. So here's the boundary coming down like that between the two brown units, inclined down towards the east. Dark brown on top, and some we'll put some light brown underneath like this. OK, so that's more or less as we know so far. But in between these two packages, this time we've got some yellow in here. So let's pop the yellow units on between the two units, the brown and the green, sitting down like this. So where is our yellow rock? It's going to sit with a boundary in here like this. So let's put the yellow units in between the green and the top of the dark brown, inclined also towards the east. Just tidy this up a bit, colour in the dark brown beneath, and uh, we can put the rest of the units on. Let's orient it so we know which way we're looking still. There we go, and put our section line in like that. So let's label these A, A prime for the northern one, like that, and we're going to put B, B prime for the southern section. So there are our two cross sections. How do they work? So let's consider how these two profiles relate to one another. And we'll do this by trying to construct a section that's perpendicular to them. So we're going to think about a section running from the north down to the south through the chalk to link the two sections together. So let's put our datum in, like this. And the section line is from the north north west to the south south east. Let's say that we're going to put the chalk in all the way along the outcrop. So let's put a layer of chalk in just below the surface in here. We'll move the section up in a minute so we can all have a look at the lower part. So there's chalk running along the outcrop through here. Now let's consider section line A through here. So here's section line A with the brown units under the chalk in here. So that is section A, or A, A prime. And it's running perpendicular to the one we're drawing at the moment. Now let's consider the other section to the south where the yellow rocks lie between the brown and the green. Let's uh, pop on our profile. So some yellow rocks directly underneath the green. And we can put the brown in underneath. OK, so that's section B through here. Well, let's just slide this up to see what we've been doing. So let's just do a little tidy up in here. We can uh, shade in these units a bit more clearly in like this. And let's just label this so we're in section line through here, which is B, B primed. Right, now let's try and join them up. So we can join these through to here. Let's come put the yellow up in here. We need to join that boundary up and it must hit the green before it hits a, a prime. So the brown unit continues underneath to appear between the two sections like that. So let's just tidy that up. So the brown unit underlies section A, A prime under the chalk there. And as we go to the south, it underlies the yellow unit so that it's separated from the chalk by the yellow when we get to section line BB. And then let's tidy up the light brown underneath. So quick tidy. brown unit continuous like that and now we can just shade in the yellow which forms a wedge coming in from section BB. So the yellow unit tapers northward 
and we can see the pinch out here and on the map up here. So let's just label these X and X on the map, and we can just tidy this up and show the section line for C coming through here, C, C primed, and just label up the section two. So let's zoom out and we can put the geology together using the map and the three sections together. Well, now it's time to interpret these relationships. The yellow rocks we'd expect to originally be deposited across all these brown rocks all the way across to here, but it's missing now and green is sitting directly on brown in this position. So this is the expected relationship of an unconformity. So this contact at the base of the green is an unconformity surface, which here is erosional, but as you go south, is has less deeply eroded the underlying successions. And you can see that even on the map, that there's truncation within this package we've just grouped together as yellow. So the erosion has actually continued further south, beyond point X, like this. So this is an unconformity, unc. We have a lower, stratigraphic unit and we've got on top of it an upper stratigraphic unit. These are distinct packages separated by the unconformity like that. So in developing geological understanding from maps like this it's good to be able to sketch out little relationships, explore the geometric relationships between the different units using sketch maps and profiles. Um, and in doing so, we can understand the relationship between bedrock geology and erosion. The complexity of the map pattern in here, where it is complex, is a result of the modern landscape incising into what is effectively rather simple bedrock geology. So, by reading how geology is represented in the landscape on maps, we can appreciate the 3D arrangements of rocks and begin to reveal something of their geological history.